Hello, welcome to the 28th module, European Literature of the 20th Century. This first lecture is on French writers. 20th century French literature was highly experimental. The avant-garde movements were continuing from the 19th century. You already know the movements were symbolism of people like Baudelaire, Valéry, Proust, Verlaine, etc. Surrealism, starting from Apollinaire, Salvador Dali, Louis Bunuel, etc. were important figures in painting and film. Then there was Expressionism in Germany and Existentialism in France. Existentialism grew in the hands of Albert Camus, Jean-Paul Sartre, Albert Camus, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, these were philosophers also, as well as literary figures. So it was a very brilliant period, 20th century French literature. Eventually, philosophy gave way to literary theory also in France. During this time, French novel underwent a big change. There were novel series that emerged in France, Roman flu, that is what they were called. A very important figure in writing series novels was Romain Rolland. His Jean Christophe was a very major novel series from as early as 1904. Another very early writer in France was André Gide. André Gide wrote a lot of psychological novels that also have autobiographical ramifications. And coming from a very puritanical, moralistic culture, he talked about characters caught between puritanical strictness and intellectual freedom and honesty. His important novels, such as the first novel, The Immoralist, later Straight is the Gate, one of his later novels is The Counterfeiters, all are exceptionally great modernist novels that present the protagonist's dilemmas in the manner that I just mentioned. A very major French modernist was Marcel Proust. He created history with his huge novel, Remembrance of Things Past, also translated as In Search of Lost Time. This is a massive novel written in seven parts, starting from Swan's Way, published between 1913 and 1927. Here, we have a very strange kind of anti-novel structure because there is no proper plot construction. There is no fully developed characterization. The narration is in stream of consciousness. The unnamed narrator often slips into involuntary memory. Memory is like a character in the novel. The protagonist is insomniac. He cannot sleep. And he slips into involuntary memory. Very uh, apparently simple looking incidents in his life. Like one night at Combray when he lay awake in bed. Swan, their family friend, had come visiting. And uh, how his mother later came to him and she was with him throughout that night, reading to him, talking to him. This is actually an insignificant memory. Nothing much happens here. But this memory is a formative, has a formative influence on the protagonist. There is another incident that he remembers, a time that he had tea with his mother. And Madeleine cake or Madeleine cookie is a very soft, small, tender uh, cookie or cake. He had it dipped in linden tea. This memory, especially of the senses, pertaining to taste especially, is a very important characteristic of this novel, this kind of memory. So it is against uh, the experience of the conscious mind. This novel explores dreams and memories, experiences of the subconscious mind. The language is also not a very formal, linear language. Here, Proust is using very long, complicated sentences with a lot of symbolic significance. This is a very important contribution to modernist literature in search of lost time or remembrance of things past. 
existentialism had dawned by then. Jean-Paul Sartre was a philosopher. He wrote very important philosophical books such as Being and Nothingness, which is a, an exposition of existentialist philosophy. He talks about how every human being is being for itself. We are different from a jug or a cup or an inanimate thing. If you keep a jug somewhere, it will be there forever. But we are restless because we want to change. We want to, to grow. And uh, coming to existentialism, this kind of a human being who is being for itself is restless. And uh, human beings are constantly in search of uh, something beyond themselves. We are separated from the rest of the world with an invisible wall, which makes us alienated. We are always alienated from the rest of the world, from the rest of being, because of which we also develop an anxiety. We desire to be like God, to be perfect, to be being in itself, to be stable, but it is a frustrated desire. We cannot be that. And this frustrated desire and alienation leads to what is called absurdity. The absurdity of our existence is that we are always dominated by a desire that we cannot fulfill. Before being a nothingness, Sartre wrote a novel, Nausea. Nausea, or the feeling that you want to vomit. This is an expression of the protagonist's revulsion from the world of matter. He begins to hate the world of matter. He doesn't want things. He doesn't want to be with people. He feels nauseated. This is an expression, um, an allegorical expression of the idea that life is banal, cheap, mundane, not deep. The protagonist, the existentialist protagonist is unable to come to terms with his life in the society, in this world of matter. Sartre has also written famous plays. His first play is The Flies. Another major play is No Exist. Imagine you are trapped in a room with other people and you cannot escape. There's not even a window. In that play, he shows that hell is other people. Another important um, absurdist or existentialist writer was a Romanian French writer, Eugene Ionesco. Ionesco's first play was The Bald Soprano. And it is a play that Ionesco wrote based on his own experience in learning English using the Assimil method. It was very absurd, his attempt to learn English using that method. And he shows in this play two families who cannot communicate with one another. They are engaged in meaningless banter. This kind of absurdity or incommunicability between people, a very sad kind of absurdity of life is evoked in his other plays also, especially the chairs. In the chairs, there are two characters mainly, mainly an old man and an old woman. They are waiting for some invisible guests. There are chairs in the room. They are, they are arranging these chairs. The invisible guests arrive. And of course, the old man and the old woman are not able to communicate properly with them. Finally, they commit suicide by jumping out of the window. This is a play that defies logic. This is a play that defies reason. Reason and logic do not solve problems in our life. It does not describe um, the situation of the human condition. And this play, The Chairs, is an expression of a deep felt sadness and uh, alienation from the society, a feeling of emptiness. Another very important play by Eugene Ionesco is Rhinoceros. The protagonist is Berenger. He is an everyman, an ordinary everyman who drinks too much and lives a mundane life. Berenger is a character who keeps recurring in Ionesco's plays. You see in three acts of this play, all the inhabitants of a small town turning one by one into rhinoceroses. Something absurd comes into your society like Nazis, Nazism or fascism 
In our society also this is applicable. And we all go after it. We, without thinking, become victims of a mass hysteria or a mass metamorphosis. Only Berenger, the everyman, who apparently leaves, uh, leads a very normal, mundane life. He is not a hero at all, but only he is able to resist this mass metamorphosis. It is a response, as I mentioned, to the rise of Nazism and fascism in Europe at this time. Another important French writer is Jean Genet. Genet is interesting because from the age of 10, he was a thief. And he even got convicted and was imprisoned in court. But he also turned out to be a writer. He wrote novels and plays and also a very important autobiography called The Thieves' Journal. Once he was convicted to life imprisonment, a lot of world leaders and writers appealed to the French government and Genet was given exemption. And after this, Genet left his life of thieving and he turned to social causes. He became an activist. His Thieves' Journal is very important. It was published in 1949. The next writer that I'm talking to you about is Jean Anouilly. Jean Anouilly was a playwright and he wrote very stylized ritualistic plays uh, such as the pink plays, the black plays. His black plays were all tragedies. There were brilliant plays which were uh, a mix of the dark and the pink, the black and the pink plays. Very important among Anouilly's plays are two. Antigone and Beckett. The same story as Sophocles' Antigone. Anui's Antigone shows a woman standing up against state power. This woman is a brawny, uh, tomboyish girl, Antigone. Beckett also was a man who stood up against state power. These two are very important plays of Jean Anui. Next, we have Albert Camus. Albert Camus was a very major writer. Uh, who contributed to existentialism and absurdism. The Rebel is a book-length essay that he wrote, a philosophical essay. Camus was primarily a philosopher, I told you before. As a writer, a creative writer, two of his very famous novels should be remembered, The Plague and The Outsider or The Stranger. The Plague is about an outbreak of the plague uh, in the Algerian city of Iran. It is summer, it is very hot, the sunlight is beating down. It is almost like a character in both these plays, both these novels, The Plague and The Outsider, The Harsh Sun. And uh, Ber Dr. Bernard Drew is the protagonist. He realizes that the plague is spreading because more and more rats are seen dead everywhere. And uh, the novel is about how the people react to the plague. At first they deny it, then they become very selfish, self-centered and they eventually many of them start uh, getting together to work for the others to help them overcome the plague. And finally when the plague is finally overcome, Bernard Drew knows that it, would, it won't go away like that. It is lying dormant. It might break out again anytime. This novel is has the, more or less the same theme as the next novel I'll talk about, The Outsider, which is the archetypal human condition. The, it is, these novels are allegories of human beings' lives in this indifferent world. The world is very cruel and the world doesn't care about you very much. The Outsider is the story of Mersau. He is numb with modernity. The novel begins on the day his mother dies. And very shockingly, the novel begins, mother died today, or probably yesterday, I do not know. And he goes to his mother's funeral, sits there, he doesn't feel much. Relationships have no value in this world. It's a mechanized world. And within a day of his mother's death, he comes back, meets an old girlfriend, makes love to her, goes for a comedy movie, and then, within a couple of days, he goes to the beach to spend a vacation there, a holiday there, that is. And he meets an Arab on the beach, two Arabs in fact. They are his friends, acquaintances. And 
those people are quarreling with his friend Raymond who is actually a pimp the friend is a pimp and the friend has been beating up his girlfriend for cheating on him and this girlfriend's brother and friend are the Arabs our Mursa has nothing to do with them directly but he goes out and shoots one of them to death because he is experiencing ennui, frustration he doesn't care anymore and then there is a long drawn-out trial in the trial the pretentious middle-class society does not focus on the crime itself but the judge and the trial focuses on why he did not cry at his mother's funeral why he uh, didn't feel for his mother's death why he went out with his girlfriend and went for a comedy movie etc and uh, eventually after the description of the trial we realized that what is the problem here is not Merso, it is the society and Merso is asked to repent by a clergyman he does not want to repent because he does not believe in a God there is no God in this world he feels finally Merso is put to death and he's angry he's, he says he's right at feeling like what he feels this is more of a, a novel about the society and its mechanized life that creates characters like Mursa than about the character Mursa himself Albert Camus as you might know has also written a very famous philosophical essay called the myth of Sisyphus it is in the myth of Sisyphus that he discusses absurdity the philosophical uh, situation or condition of absurdity Albert Camus has also written Thais a very important play that he wrote is Caligula Caligula is a Roman uh, tyrant another important writer is a Czech French writer Milan Kundera Kundera had an uneasy relationship with the Communist Party which is what his first novel The Joke is about and he had uh, gone to exile he lived in France for a long time considered himself more French than Czech Kundera's The Joke is about how Ludwig Jean who was not particularly a rebel but he was critical of the Communist Party in indirect ways he wrote an innocent joke in a postcard that he sent to his girlfriend and for years after that he was dogged down he was dogged by the communist party he was hunted down by the communist party punished for what he wrote this novel as well as later novels that like the unbearable lightness of being laughable loves life uh, is elsewhere etc are about these novels are about frustrated love in the joke is also about frustrated revenge Kundera's novels are not only philosophical but also political the unbearable lightness of being for example is about two women and two men two couples and a dog Thomas and Teresa and Sabina and Franz it's about like in the wasteland thwarted love perverted love love without spirituality and it is about the archetypal human condition in this uh, absurd political situation politics is there in that novel it is set against the Prague Spring in Czechoslovakian history so with Milan Kundera we come to the end of 20th century French writers obviously there are innumerable French writers in the 20th century I have left out actually the majority of them and focused only on the very important writers that you should know and read as students of English literature French literature is massive and it is beautiful I hope you will get a first-hand taste of French literature it is imperative that you read European literature especially French literature in understanding 20th century British literature so because the influence of the French on the British is tremendous happy reading and please do the tests also thank you